I've tapped out all the uh, the resources I have to prop this up. So I'm uh, the hardest thing for me to, to ever do is ask for help. And I guess what I'm doing is asking for uh, uh, the help and support of the people that really value this story. So with that, um, again, I'm humbled. I'm honored. Um, I'm a little bit embarrassed. But uh, I just felt the right thing to do was to be honest with the people that love this store and the people that have supported this store. And uh, Louisville's been a great place. Um, I want this to continue. Whether I'm here or not, I want this store to, to live on. So with that, Okay, I'm not done yet. <laughs> this is my encore. This is where the chair starts falling. I've not asked anybody to uh, um, to write anything or say anything about this story. Um, I can't read this. Um, is there anybody here that wants to read this? You want to read it, Rebecca? This is Rebecca Cornwell, my uh, store manager. This is a letter that. Uh, came from a former employee um, who's now living in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, his name's Scott Richer. He's, uh, <laughs> he's a renaissance man, to say the least. He's a, uh, he's a musician, he's an artist, he's a designer, he's a uh, political activist, and he's a hell of a human being. And he, uh, he wrote this, and uh, um, I just can't read it. This is, I got this yesterday. And uh, I think this says it all. It's funny that he thinks I can read this. Um, okay. Hey, John. I just wanted to take a moment to wish you the best of luck tomorrow. I'm sure you hear this a lot, but I know for sure that my life would not have been the same without your ecstasy. You and the store have provided so many opportunities for me over the years not just in buying and selling music, but in the community and the relationships that have grown from that shared experience. The support you and the store have given me and the countless others over the years have been truly priceless. I know that I would not have become who I am today, either publicly and privately, without your ecstasy, having been a part of my life. I have always admired your dedication to the store and to Louisville. Whatever the future may hold, I want to thank you wholeheartedly for everything you've already done that has helped shape the lives of many and has made so much more possible beyond simply the music. Best regards, Scott Richer. Amen. We all feel that way. I appreciate it. Um, the media has any questions? Um, I don't know how to go about this, but just, uh, just ask and I'll, I'll tell you what I know. Yes. Obviously, the whole community loves you. Um, yeah. I live in Highlands. I drive past this place all the time. Yeah. How are you feeling in this moment? I know it's been hard for you. Uh, you said oh, wow. Um, I mean, this has been looming for a long time. And, uh, you know, my lease is up in two months. I still have a five-year option on this space. I've been here 15 years, and I want to stay. But, you know, the reality is I can't afford the rent. I've cut expenses in every way that I can. I've not let an employee go because I can't afford them. We've cut back hours, and the staff has been, you know, incredible in finding other part-time jobs because they do love this store, and they could be making more money, you know, flipping burgers at McDonald's, most of them. Um, I honestly believe this store can go on, but uh, it's just it's hard for me to ask for, for help. Like I said, I'm not asking for a bailout. I'm looking, I, I need business, I need, I need the support, you know, if you're, it's more convenient to go to, to, to buy the CD at the department store when you're, you know, buying groceries and getting tires for your car, I understand that, but um, this is much more than a record store, and I think that people like Scott Richer and a lot of the people here that are not here for the media, um, that are just fans of the store, a lot of musicians, and uh, very talented people. They could they could put it in a better perspective than I could. But uh, um, it's it's just a matter of the continued support that we've seen over the last two days. I mean, yesterday we had we had a day that you know was 
kind of like the old days, you know. And it's I know the business is out there. We saw it for a week at Christmas. Um, I do understand that everybody's hurting, that people are out of work, and that you know they're scared to spend their money. The only thing that I think is going to bring back the economy, period, is people letting loose of a little money. You know, credit industries putting the screws on everybody. Um, I just honestly believe that uh, that this can work, and I, you know, if the response uh, affirms that, then I'll do everything I can to keep the doors open, whether it's here or another location. I have a two-part question. First, uh, growing up in Louisville, I just remember whenever you ask someone about something that's hard to get, yeah. this is the one place that they right. mention. Um, so, with that said, do you think that it has a lot to do with Apple and iTunes, where people can just the comforts of their own home? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And then my second part is, with this many people, I mean, this is probably the only store in the city where people come from all over, the, from the east, the south, everywhere. So, do you think after? Today, that are you confident that it will save the store? I, I, as far as saving the store, I can only hope. Um, like I said, the uh, the outpouring um, and the the well wishes and the offers the last few days have been overwhelming. Um, it's not just a quick fix. It's not you know, well, let's go shop at your ex to see this week and then business goes away again. That's it, it's not going to sustain us. Um, and let me make a point of this. Obviously, this is about my store, about your ecstasy. But this applies to so many locally owned independent businesses here in Louisville that um, I just decided to put a face on what's going on in, uh, in the Louisville community. We, we all take things for granted. A lot of people have taken the store for granted for years. And I understand that. Um, it, it, it just needs, it needs your support. Well, the iTunes thing, I, I, I think iTunes is great. Um, Steve Jobs at Apple got it right. You know, the music industry could not figure out how to work its way out of a paper bag, and Steve Jobs made it easy to, uh, to access music. Um, as it hurts, yeah, it's hurt a little bit. What really hurts is the, the, the people that don't buy music but just download it illegally. That's, what's, that's another part of what's just my opinion, but... If an artist wants to give you his music, his or her music, their music, that's totally up to them. But um, I spoke to a high school uh, about three months ago. Um, and over the years, I've talked to schools all over town. I always do a survey. Who buys music? Everybody raised their hand. And then I asked, how many people actually come to a record store? Two out of 30. Um, how many of you actually pay for your music? Two out of 30. So, you know, the perception is, is that music should be free, that you can, act, you can access it for free. You can, you can steal it all day long. But uh, I, I think iTunes is great. I think we have a, uh, a great download site for right now. I don't know how much longer I can keep it up there because it's financially, it's, it's a money pit. There's no way to make money selling 99-cent tracks or $1.39 tracks can't do it. This is how this is how the store will survive. Um, the fact that we get artists from total unknowns to huge names to play this room um, is another way that I've been able to to keep this store going. Um, I've told my nieces many times that John Mayer played this store <laughs> standing right here to a hundred people and they're like no way. Well, now, if you want to go see John Mayer, you've got to go to Freedom Hall before it sells out. Um, we've had great support from all the local musicians, um, big name groups, uh, Foo Fighters. Um, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters wanted to play the store on Independence Day a number of years ago. They played here later that night, they played Freedom Hall, right here in this room. Um, Perhaps the uh, the all-time favorite and end-all, be-all in-store was uh, a Louisville band most people don't know, My Morning Jacket. <laughs> I can't thank them enough. Every band is a local band somewhere, and they are a prime example of the music community that Louisville offers to the world. You know, these guys played our store... Um, before they were going to.